It's the Emma Blackwell Show, searching the web for the most creative, intriguing, and captivating people in the world. Welcome once again to the Emmett Blackwell Show. Before we begin, I would like to thank you all for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. This episode is brought to you by BookBannersEtc.com and Willow Kester Jewelry. If you enjoy the show and would like to become a sponsor, you can by contacting me directly at emmett.blackwell at gmail.com. On this episode, I have romance author Christine Raymond. She has written two romance series. The Hidden Spring series takes place in the Wild West, and the Celebration series takes place in modern times. She shows her readers that love has no limit and explores relationships between varying characters at different ages in their lives. If it's one thing to be said about this author, she is determined and creative by publishing an astonishing 15 titles in only six years. She also has a podcast named Wordplay with Christine Raymond. We are very excited to have Christine Raymond on the show. Hello, Christine. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show, Emmett. Oh, no problem. I, after looking at your collection of books, um, I'm surprised I haven't had you on the show already. Um, <laughs> so now, when did you actually begin writing? I started Labor Day weekend 2013. Oh, wow. You got it right <laughs> down to the date. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. Is that specific enough for you? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. A lot of people spend their Labor Day weekends barbecuing, and you're uh, sitting in front of a computer writing. I got you. <laughs> That's right. Yep. A uh, a friend of mine had uh, self-published her own books. This is not anything that had ever been on my radar, but in talking with her about the whole process, I thought, you know, that sounds kind of cool. I want to give it a try, and I sat down and wrote my very first book, Here to Stay. Wow, man. It's incredible. Now, how many books have you actually written total? Because you've written so many. I've I've published fifteen to date. Wow, man! And that, it's incredible. Go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, sometimes it's hard for me to believe too. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm I'm just trying to do the math here, and you said you started in 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is 2019. You did 15 books within that amount of time. That's more than a book a year. Oh yeah, it averages about three books a year. Wow, that's incredible. I'm honestly, all the authors out there listening, uh, any creative who's out there listening, it's an accomplishment to get one book out in a year, um, and you've done a very good job. So congratulations. Well, thank you. Thanks. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. I love it. Yeah, I can't imagine doing anything else. <laughs> So now you've written two romance series, uh, Hidden Springs and, and the Celebration series. How do these two series differ from each other? Well, the Hidden Springs series is historical Western, what I call historical Western romantic suspense, it, because it has all four of those elements in it. And that is what I first started to write. I love that time period. I love that era. If I could time travel, I'd be back into the 1800s in a heartbeat. And it, it just seemed like the most natural thing for me to write. So I started off with uh, writing the historical Western. And then when I kind of got a little bit tired of the research, <laughs> I, the celebration series is contemporary romance. Mm. So I get to use cell phones in that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, because they didn't have cell phones in the wild, wild west. But they had a lot of <laughs> steam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and that's another thing too. I've seen books like this similar um, to what you write and, you know, you see them on a shelf and honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm a guy. Okay. I don't normally pick up a romance novel, but when I started kind of thumbing through yours, I'm like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is pretty good. Um, this <laughs> is, uh, I mean, honestly, I'm glad this is a podcast cause I'm probably blushing a little bit now, but, uh, <laughs> but it's still, it's really good stuff. Um, okay. yeah. Now your books deal primarily with relationships. Uh, uh, when you look into like a new story or, or a new set of characters, do you base them on yourself or people you know? Kind of a little bit of both. Um, for me, writing romance is about two people. I mean, that's kind of the whole the whole basis of it. And usually it's about two people that really want to get together, but outside forces keep them apart. Mm. And in my real life, I haven't had anything that 
quite that exciting happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine. I mean, and when it comes to your imagination, you can go anywhere, including whatever time you want to go to. So <laughs> That's right. That's right. But uh, no, I mean, there's there's a little part of my personality in in all of my characters, male or female. There's little little snippets of me in my life in all of the books that I write. Wow. But it, because they're coming from me. I mean, it's just mm. natural for my personality to come out on the page. Mm, yeah, definitely. It's a good way to build your characters, too, is by exploring those parts of your personality that, you know, you normal people don't see during the day. So it is nice. Um, but actually, um, we'll be right back and we'll be talking uh, to Christine about her books after a message here from our sponsors. Have you ever found yourself looking for a gift but just can't find something that's unique and different? There are many online shops to find jewelry, but most of those sites carry manufactured creations that are mass-produced. The internet is at your fingertips. You shouldn't have to travel through all the realms to get something amazing. At Willow Kestrel Jewelry, you will find handcrafted creations. Whether you are looking for a wire-wrapped pendant, natural shells, or beautiful precious gemstones, you will find it all at Willow Kestrel Jewelry Shop at Etsy.com. Willow Kessel Jewelry uses genuine gemstones, including amethyst, moonstone, citrine, rose quartz, laramar, malachite, sapphire, and many more. You can make it rain with gemstones. I know I did. And it felt like I had been transported back in time to when me and my friend had to take a ring back to a mountainous volcano and toss it in to save the world. Now you can use the coupon code BLACKWELL20, that's Blackwell, with the number 20, to save 20% at checkout. Search Willow Kessel Jewelry under Shops at Etsy.com today. In a world full of obstacles and haphazard graphics, one company has broken the mold of building amazing book covers, banners, video trailers, and more. Book Banners Etc. is your premier source for the most epic designs. Constructed from the mind of independent author Lynn Lamb, Book Banners Etc. is dedicated to making your dream a reality. They offer an array of marketing materials at affordable prices. If you're looking for book covers that pop, Banners that captivate, swag for signing, and alluring video trailers stop by www.bookbannersetc.com. That's bookbannersetc.com. Imagine your world, then make it epic with www.bookbannersetc.com. And we are back. Now, your first book, Here to Stay, from the Hidden Spring series, revolves around the relationship between Sam McKenzie and Kate Ryan. Uh, would you care to tell us a little bit about that story? Sure. That whole idea actually came about with Kate as being the main character. For me, that story is very female driven. And I just, I had this idea for a story about this woman in the Old West who kind of went against convention. She, um, she's had something horrible happen to her and to her family. And she's trying to make it on her own. She, she doesn't, she's not one of these, you know, weak females who needs a big strong man to take care of her. She's just determined that she, she doesn't need anybody. And Sam comes along and decides it's, it's his job to change her mind about that one because he falls in love with her. And, and the book is just about their relationship and th they didn't have an easy road. That's for sure. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny, too, when it comes to these romance books, um, especially your type of writing, and you put a, a strong female lead in it, and the fact that you've kind of put this into a time frame that actually traditionally would have had a weak female lead, it's really intriguing, because um, you are able to take a time frame that would have not seen a woman running a ranch or anything like that, and you put this woman in the position where she is running the show. You know, and that's really incredible. Well, and it was rare for a woman to be doing, to, to own a business on her own of any sort back then, although a lot of brothel owners back in the 1800s were women. Mm. Um, for me, I just, I like that dynamic of, of having strong characters on both sides. And one of the taglines that I use for the Hidden Springs series is love doesn't have to be old fashioned. Like for me, it really doesn't matter what the time period is. I think the bonds of love and the relationships that get built, how it all comes together, whether it happens in the 1800s or 1980 or 2080, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, it's all the same. It's two people who are 
really trying to find their way to each other who want to be together regardless of what society says or their friends say or culture dictate. It's breaking the rules so that you can be together. Well, yeah, and that kind of leads me to another question just because I'm, I'm curious about it now after you've said that. Are you somebody who firmly believes in like the, the whole soulmate concept? Yes, but I do believe that people can have more than one soulmate. I think that if if a partner passes away, I do think it's possible to find someone else that you're that you can be with and live your life with and be happy. And maybe and maybe that person's your soulmate also. When you meet the right person, it there's just there's just a, a bond there. There's it it's all the little things that kind of click and and yeah, they're they're your person. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, there's so many different types of love. You know, I mean, it, it's so multidimensional. The emotion itself cannot be explained in one word. And even though people try so hard, um, right. it, it is such a complex emotion. Okay, so now your most recent book in the Hidden Springs series, it doesn't let the reader down. It keeps that fire burning. Uh, in this book, it follows physician Micah Tanner, who returns to Hidden Springs to teach the people about modern medicine. Uh, what helped inspire this story? You know, Enduring Traditions kind of came out of nowhere. Um, I had, at that point, I thought I had finished writing the series, was coming home. I thought that would be the last book. And Micah showed up uh, last summer while I was busy on a, a different book and said, you know what, I really want you to write a story about me. Mm -hmm. And I, in doing the research, because I knew I wanted to set it at the turn of the century, and doing a lot of the research and just the different progress that was being made back then. I mean, it, it's just astounding to look at what the, the developments and the advancements that were being made just in general, but especially in medicine in the late 1800s. And I really um, love natural healing. I'm a big believer in herbs and homeopathic remedies and things like that. And I thought, well, it'd be kind of cool to sort of have those two cultures clash. And so Ellie is a medicine woman and Micah is a physician and that's their, their conflict is trying to make those two fields of medicine of healing come together and being able to accept that in each other that she wants to heal naturally. She doesn't necessarily like the invasive procedures of modern medicine and he kind of thinks it's all hooey and it, it's just it was an interesting dynamic to write yeah and and what an interesting time frame too i'm one of those people who um i i've followed the paranormal and the mysterious and i'll tell you one thing about the 1880s and the 1890s very metaphysical time and a lot of people don't look at that because normally they don't teach that kind of stuff in history books. But they had like hotels that had like hot springs in it with with different types of elixirs and waters. And and they were they were carrying on this tradition. And it, a lot of it came from the Native Americans. They were they mm -hmm. were giving their ideas and their ways of healing that they've done for centuries um, to people who have never seen this before. And of course, you know, uh, the Europeans and, and the uh, early Americans um, started capitalizing on this stuff. And so it, it's like you have this clash between science and metaphysics. I mean, it was a great time for people who love the paranormal. Anybody who's out there who's listening, the 1890s were full of seances and all kinds of cool things. And um, people were either... It was almost like people were either getting gypped or people were actually being healed. And both of these worlds were happening simultaneously. All in, all at the same time, all these, you know, scientific advancements, it was just incredible. So, yeah, it, it is perfect timing to put a conflict like this into writing. So now – um your celebration series follows the same romantic connections, and we had talked about this a little bit before, um, and you keep your readers glued to the pages. It appears as though your characters really connect with your audience. How do you connect your uh, characters to your audience? I just try to make them real. I really strive to develop their personalities and their characteristics so that you feel like it's you know, you're, it could be your coworker or your best friend or the guy or girl on the street. It just, I just really work hard at making them have dimension and, 
you know, kind of breathing life into the, into these characters. Yeah. You know, it's funny to me too, because like you had mentioned the, the relationship that you have, uh, with like, let's say Sam and Kate, you know, the, the same type of love they have can transcend into these more modern stories. Even though there's a cell phone involved in your celebration series or, or uh, cars, you know, it's, it's still the same connection that, that we all have, all people have, and we just continually, uh, repeat these same patterns when it comes to the way we get swooned and, you know, the way we, we go after somebody and try to impress them and things like that. I mean, it, it really is unique uh, to the human race. So it's really good that you can take that same story idea, put it into a more modern story and, and still have a great romance that, that still holds true. And the challenge is finding creative ways to do that mm. because you don't want to tell the story same story over and over and over, even if you're just changing the time periods. Mm -hmm. it, so it really is kind of get creative with, okay, how do I get these two together or keep them apart <laughs> and then get them together without it sounding so outlandish that no one believes it? You know, you kind of want that little kernel of truth, like, you know what, that could happen. I could, I could see myself doing that. Yeah, because, you know, long-distance relationships nowadays aren't that big of a deal. But back then, you're you're traveling across the United States uh, for 12 weeks. So, <laughs> I mean, right. Yeah. Right. So, and, and then a text message takes, like, I don't know how many days to get to the person. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now, as I've said before, you have a huge collection of works, along with a few standalone titles, such as Tempted and Seasons of Love. Um, how do you continue to create such uh, standalone titles? Do you do this as kind of like an off the spur moment or? Yeah, you know, my ideas just come to me. I, I mean, I know that kind of sounds like, no, that can't happen. You've, you've got to be sitting down and really working this out. But I'll just I'll just get an idea for a story and just run with it and see where it goes. And um, Tempted was my first uh, first attempt at a more erotic type story I consider it an erotic drama and that book took me places that I you know I hadn't been before and then Seasons of Love is four short stories of w what they consider uh, seasonal romance or se seasoned romance uh, where the couples are you know a little bit older they're they're not 20 years old just falling in love for the first time and so that was kind of interesting too to to write about older characters falling in love, maybe hmm. the second time around. And there's ties in each of those stories to one of the other stories. So that was kind of a, an interesting thread to keep up too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, and you know, you, you bring up a really good point. The fact that, you know, you, you bring on these older characters um, and love knows no age when it comes to when it strikes, you know, I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter if you're 20 years old or 50 years old. If you start falling for somebody, you know that you're falling for somebody and that other person might be falling for you too. And, and it really does kind of bring a unique feel to a romance when you have older characters because for one when you're in your 20s you don't have much of an experience but when you're in your 50s you've got this whole lifetime of experience you know what you want you know what you don't want and and it really kind of it, it almost like i mean People who get into relationships later, they feel as though they're more confident about the relationship because they know that they have all those life experiences. They don't need to go uh, having a midlife crisis and run off, you know. Um, but still, it, it does add a unique uh, dimension to it. So that's really good. I uh, I think I like, and maybe it's because I am what would be considered seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> of, I can identify more with somebody falling in love at 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 than I can with a 20 year old because it's different nowadays than it was when I was 20. Mm, yeah. You know, love, love might stay consistent, you know, falling in love might be the same, but there's so many differences. Also. Oh yeah. Yeah, there really is. And you know, it, it's, it's good to explore those things and, and get involved with it and find out what's going on so you can kind of understand your characters. But like you said, I mean, write what you know, 
you know, and if and if that's what you know, definitely go with it because it's working and you're you just popping out these <laughs> titles like crazy. I'm just still <laughs> I'm blown away by this. I really am. Um so now because you've written so many books, um, what advice would you give a brand new romance author? Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, it honestly, if if you wait for the right moment to start writing, you'll never start. So if you have a story in inside of you, you know, sit down, get it out. Don't worry about it being perfect the first time through. That's what drafts are for mm -hmm. and edits are for. And uh, take the chance. Take the chance. Just, you know, if it's something you really want to do and listen to all the advice that's out there, everything out there that's available and then do it your own way. Because every author, every single author will tell you something different about how to do how their process works or what you should or shouldn't do. Everyone has their own opinion and everybody has what works for them. So find your own way and write. If you love it, if you have a story to tell, make it authentically yours and do it. <laughs> wow. That, that's really good advice. Now, we've come to the part of the show where I usually uh, put the authors or the guests through um, some type of quiz or trial by fire. And so <laughs> here we go. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to do a game um, called Two Truths, One Lie. Now, the way that this works is you're going to give me three things um, that are, well, two truths and one lie. I have to guess which one is a lie. And... Um, I'll go first, so in that way you can see how it works. You have to guess which one is a lie. And then um, we'll do like best two out of three or something like that. And uh, we'll see how this goes, right? Okay. All right. Here we go. The first one. When I was younger, I learned how to play guitar just to impress a girl. Then, when I was younger, my first car was a Pontiac Fiero. And when I was younger, I used to play basketball. I would say the lie is the Pontiac Fiero. No, 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 no. That is true. <laughs> I did actually have a Pontiac Fiero. That was my first car. The thing looked like junk and it rode like a little golf cart, but it was still, <laughs> it was really cool. Um, the, the lie was actually that I played basketball. I did not play basketball. I am a very short person. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, short people can play basketball. Oh, yeah, they can. Yep. Uh, they're <laughs> usually the ones that get stepped on to jump up to the hoop. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So go ahead with your. Or uh, truths and one lie. Okay. I don't know how to drive a stick shift. I've never eaten sweet potato fries. I met the man who became my husband while I'm on a blind date with his best friend. <laughs> oh, that's just great. That's a whole nother book right there. <laughs> okay, so I think that the lie is that you can't drive a stick shift. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I just. And I will have you know, I tried all day to think of a convincing lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I know a lot of people that drive a stick shift. I drive a stick shift myself, and I'm one of those people that love it. Um, like when they start coming out with the concept of autonomous cars, I'm like, heck no. <laughs> you can take away I my know, fun I, driving. I know. I love to drive a stick. But... All right. Here's the next one. I own three TVs. The next thing is, I have four dogs. And the next thing is, I used to work in fast food. That's a tough one. I'll say the lie is the three TVs. No, 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 no. The lie was actually the four dogs. I don't have four oh, dogs. Okay. I only have one cat, and I love her so much. She's so cool. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So wh we've got points here. Uh, I believe it is two. Well, one for me. No, two for and, me. And none for me. None for one, you. One for you and none for me. <laughs> all right. All right. We'll do a bonus one. All right. All right. And here's, here's the bonus one. I'm going to give this one to you, hopefully. Uh, this is worth 12 billion points. And um, if you can get this one right, uh, you can walk away a winner and uh, you'll win the game with 12 billion points. All right. So here's the first one. Um, I used to run track. The next thing is I used to be in theater. And the next thing is I'm Batman. I would say the lie is you're Batman. Yes, I am not Batman. <laughs> um, contrary to popular belief, I am not Batman. 
Uh, so <laughs> you win with, uh, I think it was like 12 billion points. Congratulations. 12 billion points. Yeah, I, yeah. You really can't use them for anything. They're not exchangeable for money. <laughs> you can't really do anything with them. Well, you can say you got them. Um, and anyhow, thank you so much for being here on the show. It was a pleasure. Well, thanks for having me. This uh, is great. I love it. <laughs> so where can people find your book, Christine? They can go to my website at www.christineraymond.com, and that is Christine with a K. And you, they can find links to all of my books, uh, social media, where I'll be, uh, links to my podcast, all that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. So you do a podcast, too. I do. Yes. Oh. Wordplay with Christine Raymond. Oh, that sounds fun. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out, too. So everybody out there, check out Christine Raymond. I'm sure that if you just type her name into Google, you're going to find a plethora of information. So um, definitely check it out. Check it out on Amazon. Check it out on our website and her podcast. That is amazing, Christine. Thank you so much for being here on the show. Thanks for having me, Emmett. You have uh, a great night or a great day. Or whatever time it is. How do you is? want me to say that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. And this is Emmett Blackwell signing out. Keep on reading and keep on writing, my friends. It's the Emmett Blackwell Show, searching the web for the most creative, intriguing, and captivating people in the world. <laughs>